Hi, I'm Chuck with IWS Motor Coaches, and here we are today. We're going to take a video tour of this beautiful uh, Renegade Classic motorhome that we've custom designed and brought in here at IWS. But before we get going with the video, I want to just kind of let you know that it's our intent to try to make each video better than the last. And my, my big purpose was to try to educate and inform people that, you know, that are maybe new to the RV world and they're thinking of spending you know, two, three, four, five hundred thousand dollars on a motorhome and to try to slow down and walk you through it and take more of a learning approach rather than a salesman approach. I want you to know that when you leave comments, we do read them and uh, I take them to heart. Uh, last video, I had my transition sunglasses on and didn't realize it, so I made sure I got my regular glasses. Um, try to, I'll try not to say um or duh or uh anymore. <laughs> uh, and I'll also try not to uh, use words like fantastic, amazing, fabulous, but sometimes that's the only way I know how to describe these coaches. I grew up with pretty humble beginnings and every time I'm around one of these, it's just kind of a pinch me moment. And, uh, and well, let's just get on with it. I'm excited to show you a little bit about this motorhome. So I'm gonna go ahead and start up here at the front talk a little bit about the cab. Most of you that have been following us know we, we use, uh, and Renegade uses a lot of Freightliner chassis. We're a big fan of them. This is the Freightliner Cascadia 113. And our sole intent with this particular motorhome was to try to build as short of motorhome we can, but still keep tandem axles. So this one comes in at about 41 foot. That's about as short as Renegade wants to go or we feel comfortable going on tandems because you lose so much storage space underneath when you add the extra tandems. And one of the ways we were able to build a compact coach is by going to the 113 chassis. And what 113 inches means is, Zach, I might have you back up just a little bit for a second. It's 113 inches from the front bumper to the back of the cab. And that's what designates this as a Cascadia 113. And the reason we were able to do that is because we installed the Detroit DD13 engine, which is a little bit shorter engine than the big 16 liter. So we're able to get about a 12 inch shorter hood on it, which really helps with uh, visibility and overhang. This unit comes in at 505 horsepower and has 1,850 foot-pounds of torque. So it's an incredibly competent power plant. Um, we'll talk more about the engine when we get around to the front. Now, as you get here, here's the side mirrors. They're power-operated mirrors. Uh, just give you incredible amounts of visibility on it and uh, just works out really good. This cab is what's considered a class eight tractor cab. This is the same cab you would see on a semi running up and down the freeway. It has an 80,000 pound gross vehicle weight rating, which means if you were to weigh the cab and the motorhome and the trailer, Freightliner says you could weigh up to 80,000 pounds. So this is an incredibly competent power plat or uh, chassis. Has 40,000 pound rear axles, has an 18,000 pound front axle, and all of the design components are designed to carry immense amount of weight. So I like to say that we have um, way more chassis than we have motorhomes. And what I mean by that is a lot of motorhomes out there, Class C's, the chassis and the motorhome are built to the absolute limit. So there's not a lot of capacity where with this one, you have tons of capacity. It's got really nice big uh, door handles. Um, this sensor right here, in case you're wondering what this is, this is part of the Bendix uh, collision mitigation system. So this sensor takes a radar look or a sonar look out to the side of the motorhome. And if there's anybody over here walking or if there's a vehicle up inside the cab, a light's gonna uh, illuminate and an alarm will sound. So it's, it's all new technology and we're pretty excited to have it. Here we come to the front door and you've got a nice uh, uh, touchpad entry so you don't have to use your key fob you can just push this and it is lighted inside another thing i want to point out here is the outside television or entertainment center has a two-stage roof on it um, i hope zach can see this 
And so when the sun is low, you can run it down. And then in the evening, if there's no sun, you can go ahead and push it up higher. Has a, a Jensen DVD player in it and a stereo. And it is hooked into the uh, DirecTV satellite system inside so you can get the game out here. It's a really nice option. Um, some people like it, some don't, but it's on this coach. Another thing I want to point out is a little bit about the paint quality. This is a full, um, full paint job with clear coat on it, and it's just an exceptionally uh, nice quality paint job. I'm not going to spend a lot of time in the storage compartments. We're going to roll through them pretty, pretty quick. But basically, all of these on this side are storage compartment. This is a storage. This is a storage compartment. I'll show you here real quick. It's just a big area inside. But what we've done on this compartment is we've set it up so we can add a refrigerator freezer if you want on a slide tray to come out. Also got a nice 110 outlet here. I've switched to the electric barbecue grill, so it's nice to have this power outlet right here. A couple things I want to point out on the side. <clears throat> so you see these big LED lights up here. That's our area lights, and we've been installing them on about every single coach we build. And we just think it's just an incredible option. If you hear something at night, you can flip a switch on and you're gonna get full coverage around the motorhome. If you're out fishing, you've got light coverage over here. If you need to service your coach on that side, you've got lights and it's just something that we really think is a, is a good option to have. You'll also notice right here a vent and that vent's on the microwave. And a few people in the videos have said, well, mounting the vent under the awning is pretty stupid. Well, where else are you gonna put it? You see the microwave is right there on the wall. And I still don't understand what's the problem with mounting a vent underneath the awning. I'd rather have the kitchen smells come out here than inside the coach. <clears throat> Got your bathroom window here. Here's a, a vent for the dryer. As I mentioned before, it has tandem axles under the rear and these are full powered units. This isn't a tag axle, this is a drive axle. Each of these have air disc brakes, so when you go to tandems, you gain an extra set of axles for braking, which is very important. A lot of people are building motorhomes in the 40-foot class with one single axle. Now imagine having a 41-footer with a second tandem. You just get that much more braking. You get more airbags. You get more stability out of it. And uh, it's just a, just a really nice platform. This here is, um, we call these your docking lights, and when you come on at night, this is going to illuminate the area so you can back up and look around. Here's the AquaHot system, and AquaHot system is, a, is pretty dang neat, and I'll tell you how it works real briefly. This is basically a diesel-fired burner, and, or a boiler. So when you're not plugged in, and you're traveling down the road, Diesel fuel from your diesel tank gets pumped into here and igniter ignites it and it boils up um, hot glycol and it pumps the glycol throughout the motorhome and there's heat registers inside the motorhome. And as the hot coolant is pumping through them in the winter, whenever you want one zone to heat up, you can program it and a fan will come on and it'll blow hot air in that room. It also heats up all of your hot water, so you have basically infinite hot water. When you get to an RV park, you can plug it into 110 or into RV shore power, and then this will convert from diesel to an electric fired burner. Another neat thing about it is as you're traveling down the road, the engine heat will also run through here, so you can also use engine heat to heat your coach just like you would in a car or a pickup. It's a relatively expensive option. It runs right around $10,000. Um, and it just really depends on where the coach is going. This coach here, we've designed with our uh, spray foam insulation. So we're intending for it to go into very cold areas. So we installed the Aqua Hot. And the reason we did that is when I get to the other side, I'll be able to show you how we've used uh, it, aqua hot radiator heaters inside the uh, water compartments to help keep them warm in the winter. Uh, this lax box is just a storage compartment. Now we're going to go here on the back and one of the neat things that I like about the 
Renegade Classic is that we get a lot of flexibility with the design of it. And here you can see we're able to put in a rear window in the bedroom. We also got a backup camera up high, got an uh, exterior uh, area light there. I, I like the real basic truck light. So if you ever have a problem with a rear light, you can just go to any Napa Auto Parts store and you'll be able to replace the light. <clears throat> now, is as we talk a little bit about the hitch. So this has an adjustable trailer hitch on it, on the back. This one has a 40,000 pound rating on it. So um, we also have air brake hookups. So you could put a big trailer on the back, stacker trailer with air brakes on it and you'll be fully connected. These connectors right here, one is for your trailer plug and the other one is for the Voyager camera. Let's say you're pulling a second trailer and you wanna have a backup camera put on the back of the trailer. We could install that for you and then you could plug it in here. You'd have a backup camera on the motorhome as well as a backup camera on the trailer. These two exhaust pipe. This exhaust pipe is for the 12.5 kW generator and that exhaust pipe is for your aqua hot burner. Now we're gonna move around this side and I'm gonna have Zach kind of pull back a little bit so you can get a good look at the motorhome. And one thing we're gonna do before we move inside is I'm gonna go ahead and run the slides out in the awnings and we'll go ahead and pan around. But as you can see, it's just, uh, just a beautiful coach. Uh, it's got an incredible amount of wow factor. But I also wanna point out these motorhomes are very easy to maintain. Just drive it home, plug it into the wall, you know, leave everything in the refrigerator, wash it down once in a while, and you're good to go. Now, as we move back here to these compartments, I want to talk a little bit about each compartment. This rearmost compartment has a power wind reel, so I'm going to go ahead and reach inside of here, and you can pull out the power cord, and then when it's time to go, push the button, and it'll wind itself in. Another thing that we've done is we've had Renegade install a 110 outlet here, um, as well as a 30 amp connection. And the reason we do that is if you're at the back of the coach and you wanna, wanna run a power drill or something, you've got power. Um, you know, if you need to jumpstart your towed vehicle, you'll have power here so you can run a battery charger. The 30 amp connection is so that if you're pulling a stacker trailer, we can plug it in and you can run the air conditioner on that using this generator. This is the generator compartment. This is a, has a 12.5 kW generator. In my mind, um, we've really done a good job of overpowering the coach. We've got, we don't want you to have any regrets. We don't want you to buy this motorhome and say, geez, I wish I had a bigger generator. We like to start with the biggest generator and then you just have no regrets. This is made by Cummins Onan. This is basically a Kubota tractor engine. It's interesting, you know, a lot of people, they don't run their generator for some reason, and I think it's kinda, well, if you read the Kubota uh, instruction manual, it'll tell you they'd rather have you run the generator for two hours than to just stop and start it. These things are designed to go thousands upon thousands of hours, and so I think the reason you would buy this coach is you could get out and use it and you're completely free of everybody. You've got 150 gallons of fresh water inside. You got a large generator. There's no need to stop at RV parks. There's, somebody asked me the other day how we like our Renegade and I said, you know, I just changed my life, me and my wife. I'm kind of a type A personality who always has to plan every stop with the motel rooms. And it was, you call ahead and pack stuff in and out. And now that we have an RV, just whenever we feel like it, we get in it and we go and we don't have to be beholding to nobody. If we wanna pull over along a river, we just stop and stay the night. We take ours to weddings, we take it shopping. Um, we just go everywhere in the dang thing. We just absolutely love it and use it all the time. <clears throat> Here's the exhaust pipe. And a few people on the videos when I pointed it out, they, they said, uh, well, that's kind of dumb. You don't want that sticking out. Well where else is it gonna go? <laughs> you, you know, at some point you gotta get the exhaust out. But I can assure you, this thing's only sticking out about six or seven inches. You're, I've never even come close to scraping one on a curb. It's plenty high off of the ground. 
Um, it just has been no issue at all. Here in this compartment is the water control box and I'm just gonna kind of stand out here and point. Here's your gray tank or black tank dunk valve, your gray tank valve, your black tank wash. This is where you'll hook on and a little sprinkler will rinse out the uh, gunk inside the black tank. This is city water fill, tank fill. This is where your water hose goes in. Here's your low point drain for easy winterizing. And here's a pressurized water spigot. And this coast coach also has a whole house water filter here. So you're filtering all the water that goes in. Now, as we come to this next storage compartment, this has the macerator uh, sewage system. And I'm gonna go ahead and step in here and show you a little bit why I like it. When it comes time to dump the sewage, you just pull this little hose out stick it in the hole, open the valve, and turn the pump on. This is about a 20-foot hose, maybe 25-foot. So you don't have to get the black hose out and, and put all the little stands up and go through all that effort. You just pull this hose out, stick it in the hole, and pump it. What a macerator does is it, it chops up and emulsifies all of the waste products so you can pump it out a little bit small through a, a small hose. It's really nice if you're, um, well, in a few weeks, we're gonna be going to a big ATV rally up in the mountains and the guys will come by in the honey pot trucks because we're gonna be dry camping and I can just take that hose, stick it up in their drum and offload my waste. It works out really nice. This is more storage here. Here's the battery compartment. You can see we've equipped these coaches with 8D batteries and this particular one, as you can see, we got three. And these are, these are, big, these are big bad boys. These batteries are about $1,000 a piece. And we just think, you know, the more the merrier. In this particular coach, due to the length, three is all we could get in. But with three batteries, you'll be able to run, without the generator, you should be able to run the refrigerator and a couple TVs for eight, nine, 10, 12 hours without even needing to start the generator. So it's just a really nice uh, power pack. Here we are now up at the front. I'm gonna go ahead and open the door so you can get a little bit of a look from the outside. And you can see there's a real nice grab handle here. So it's relatively easy to go up inside the coach. You got a grab handle here, you got one right here, and you're just up and in. Now, when you're inside of the coach, this might be a good time to tell you a little bit about, it's got tilt and telescoping steering wheel, uh, makes it very easy to drive. You also have a full air operated seat here, a flex steel seat. You've got really nice armrest and adjustable on it. I really like the seating position in these because to me, I feel exactly like I do when I'm sitting in my pickup. In a Class A motorhome, you got that big windshield out there and your mirrors are way out in front of you and it's a very unnatural feeling. With a Class C, you got the steering wheel right here where you want it. You can drop this seat down exactly where you want it. Your mirrors are right there like they are on your pickup and everything's just a really natural driving experience. Our speed limit out here in Idaho right now is 80 miles an hour. And when people come out, I say, you know, this coach is designed to cruise at 80. And they're like, well, I'll never drive that fast. We go out on a test drive and I tell them, look down at the speedometer and all. And they're like, oh my gosh, I'm running 75 or 80 miles an hour. They're just, a, they're just an absolute joy to drive. This one, we've upgraded our sound system and done a lot of other uh, improvements inside the cab. And I'll tell you more when we get inside. So I'm gonna come back and talk a little bit about this power plant. Um, actually, before I do, I wanna point out the side uh, turn signal cameras. So when you turn on your turn signals, this camera looks back and shows you on the camera inside if there's a vehicle beside you. As I said, this is a Detroit DD13 engine. It's 13 liter, it's 505 horsepower, has 1,850 foot pounds of torque. Freightliners rated this engine to tow or to gross out at 80,000 pounds. So it has more than enough power to get this thing going down the road. A lot of people are gonna ask me about fuel mileage. 
This one, the reports we're getting back is you could expect to get between eight and 10 miles to gallon with this coach, depending on how you drive it. Another thing to point out on this coach is this has a, um, one of the highest B50 life ratings that an engine can have. So I, it's right up at a million mile rating. So uh, Freightliners or Detroit saying that this engine, over half of their engines have gone up to a million miles without major engine damage. So the best thing you can do to this uh, motorhome is get out and drive it. So with all that said, I'm gonna go run some of the slides out in the awning so you can get an idea what this thing looks like with the, all the slides out. Well, we got the slides out and we got this really nice two-stage awning out. Um, hard to see in the daylight, but this has an LED light strip along the top of the roof here, or the leading edge here, so it does a nice job if you have a, uh, you know, if you're out here having a picnic, you get some real nice lighting. It also works good when the awning's retracted up inside of itself. So enough with the outside, let's go ahead and go on inside and talk about the inside. Well, here we are on the inside of this coach and we always kind of struggle with where to start. I'm gonna go ahead and start over here because this coach has the multiplex touchscreen lighting system in it. It's kind of neat. Here you can see on the home screen, you got your fresh water and gray and black, tank heaters, water pump, aqua hot burner. You can start the generator right here. Um, then you have your exterior lights, interior. What I like about this is like, here's your interior lights. I can go front master on and it turns all the lights on at once. Um, we have extra lights for the rear controls. Here's your auxiliary. So it's pretty hot out today. We've turned the air conditioning off. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the ceiling fans on just to kind of get a little bit of air moving, moving in here. Here's your, your awning control. As I mentioned, you know, every time we build a custom coach here at IWS, we, we do dual grab handles, so it's easier to get in and out of the coach. This coach is uh, the colors. So sometimes when I read the comments, people say, geez, I don't like the color of that coach. And, and I just wanna point out, that's the wonderful thing about doing business with us. If you wanna order a custom coach, we can pick any color you want. The colors that we tend to pick, um, you can kind of see how I'm dressed. We're kind of, you know, I grew up on a on a cattle ranch in southern Idaho. Um, we're kind of blue collar, hard working people, and a lot of our customers kind of like more of these uh, western tones, if you will. We also have customers who really like chic and ultra modern, and we just don't video their motorhomes. We try to respect their privacy. You know, a lot of our customers are. Uh, high profile, but they want to be low profile when they're out camping. And that's what we're trying to do is help them kind of keep a low profile as well as you. We want you to really get out and enjoy this thing and, and not have to really draw a lot of attention to yourself. When we do this interior video, I'm going to kind of change the pace a little bit and try to speed it up and going to read the comments and see if you like this pace a little bit better than going really slow, slow and drawn out on all of the little details. So we're gonna start up here, here's the TV. We have a, a swing out arm on it that we have Renegade install so you can you know, have control of how you view from the television. It also has a sound bar in it and we really like it rather than the speakers in the ceiling. The reason is it's kind of more of a directional sound so a lot of our customers like it and so do I. We get to the cabinets, we have a full a residential sink, deep sink with sink covers on it. 
Um, we also have a, a pull-out spray nozzle right here in a residential style faucet. I feel like sometimes I just overemphasize the cabinets on these coaches, but they're really just wonderfully built. You can see right here the dovetail construction in the side of the doors. You can see that this is a stack silverware drawer, so the top one slides and the second one. All of the drawers are full length extension with soft close feature. These are all things you would expect to see in a high end home. Here's a convention microwave oven or convection microwave oven. Induction cooktop, we really, our customers are really telling us that they like this and just about every coach we build has this. It's not because it's the cheapest, it's because it's what the customers feel is the best. And the nice thing about it is you have this nice smooth uh, work area if you're not using the cooktop. They'll only activate if the pan is metallic so you don't have to worry about kids turning it on. If there's no pan on there, it's not gonna get hot. Works out really well. Here's a nice uh, storage compartment we have right here. It has removable shelves. In my motorhome, I actually removed these and we made this a trash can storage area. You also got room underneath the sink right here if you wanna put a trash can underneath here. There's a nice compartment here. My wife's quite the baker and cook, so she's always lobbying hard to get big storage uh, compartments so we can put pots and pans and all kinds of things in there. Now as I kind of rotate around a little bit, here's the pantry. And this has full length slide out wood drawers. And here you can really get a good shot of the, of the dovetailing in it and the, the quality of the craftsmanship in it. This upper compartment here has all of the electrical panels. And because this one has the new uh, multiplex touchscreen in it, you can see all of the green lights over here. And you can look at, uh, the light over the sofa is number one. You can see it's green, it's on right now. So if you ever have any lighting issues, we can talk you through the lighting diagnostics over here. This is just your AC switch panels and then your DC switch panels here. There's extra storage over the top of the refrigerator. Um, lots and lots of storage in this coach. This is a double door. Uh, refrigerator. It's the exact same one I have in my motorhome where we really, really have been very happy with it. You got a nice slide out um, freezer compartment and a nice maker over here and another sliding tray right there. These Renegades also installed them with latches so you can lock them shut so they won't fly open when you're driving down the road. Now, as we move over here, this was an element that I worked really hard on designing, and this is, this is why this is our signature series coach. I wanted to have a place where I can come in and sit down and kick back and watch TV. So we designed this to have, a, a, this here's a recliner. As you can see, it's, you got a nice recliner here. It also swivels and rotates. We had them install a 110 outlet and USB so that I can charge my phone here. Got the remote control, a drink. Got little cubbies holes here with a little lip on them so things don't fall out. We installed extra reading lights up here and they can all be controlled here. Um, as we move around on the coach, you'll see that we have a full sofa right here and this pulls out into a full air bed. This last weekend we were, me and uh, Couple friends were off fishing for four days up in Washington. One of my buddies slept right here. This folds out into a full air bed. He'd just give it thumbs up every night. He said it was just a great night's sleep. We also got a USB outlet and a 110 here. So if the kids are sitting here, there's three seat belts in here. So you can seat belt the kids in or passengers and they can stay connected by having power right here. So we move over here to the dinette. Um, Flex steel dinette in it, and it's all done in ultra leather fabric. As you can see, there's lots of room here to sit. I'm, you know, six foot, 250 pounds. You can also flip the lever right here, and uh, you can easily lower this down. There's another uh, cushion that'll go on, and you can turn this into a bed if you have small kids. 
it's easy to bring up. And then if I can find the lever, just lock the lever and you're back in business. Now, as we move around here to the front of the coach, this is where all of the components are kept. And you can see we've done them uh, steel mesh. Those of you that have been following our videos know we, we do this rather than the glass because we believe we want to get the heat out of there. As we move up into the, the cab, I'm not going to spend a lot of time up here today, but I do want to go ahead and just turn the key on. You're going to hear uh, a few bells, and all of them sounds that you hear are the uh, on-guard collision mitigation system on here. And this is tied into your cruise control, so if it's going to detect an imminent collision, go ahead and turn the radio down, if it's going to collect an uh, if it's sensing you're going to collide with something, it's going to uh, reduce the or stop the cruise control and start applying brakes. And there's a whole host of things we can talk about this collision mitigation. It also has um, lane sensing. So if you drift out of your lane, alarms are going to come on. And, and I think we've decided we're going to just make a whole video about that in the next coming weeks. This is our Halo 9 stereo that we stall, install here at IWS. Um, it's something I've been testing for a few years, works out really good. Our customers really like it. Um, you can go through um, all kinds of Bluetooth. You got your Sirius radio. Right now we're on FM radio. And I don't, you won't be able to hear it, but. So we call this our Rockstar Edition. We've installed uh, We've installed uh, extra Alpine speakers in it. We've installed our own subwoofer, and we've really took the music level uh, to a whole new music to a whole new level in here. This has your tire pressure monitor. It's installed, built in from Freightliner. Locking rear differentials on it. Here's your air conditioning controls and a bunch of other switches here. Cruise and tack. Here's your marker light interrupters, uh, engine brake control. You've got all your cruise control right here on the steering wheel. Just a well-appointed cab, very easy to drive. I'm going kind of fast on this one because uh, I just want to kind of see if you like this pace better. Now, as we move back in here into the bathroom, this is always challenging to film. Maybe I'll just go ahead and step right in the shower. And I do have my boots on but I'm being very careful. And here I am, as I mentioned, I'm six foot. There's lots of headroom in here. You can see the really nice skylight above my head. Lots of room in here to shower. It's one thing that people really like about these coaches. If Zach can kind of pan around here, you'll see we've done a vessel bowl sink. We've got a really nice widened vanity. And these lights right in here are all LED and you get a controller so you can change them to any light that you want. Um, you can blue, red, green, you can make them pulse and do all kinds of crazy things. Here's the controller right here. We don't have it on right now because I'm not hooked to shore power. We're on batteries, but this has heated floors here in the back and there's nothing nicer than waking up in the morning in your bare feet. If you got to go to the bathroom and have a nice heated floor. Here's a look in our bathroom. As you can see, we've used a macerator toilet. And again, it emulsifies all the byproducts. So you can use regular toilet paper in it. It's got a really nice little vanity in there. This is a great place uh, where our guests can keep their uh, bathroom possibles and things like that. Okay, now as we move over here, you can see we've done things a little bit differently. So this motorhome, we have a um, linen closet and storage here. You can take these shelves out and there's a curtain rod if you want to use it. It's just a real nice place to keep extra blankets and towels. And what we did is we went with an all-in-one washer dryer and I can hear the, I can hear the screams <laughs> from the comments right now. Look, everything on these motorhomes is about trade-offs. If you want to have a dryer up here and a washer down here, we can build you one. On this particular motorhome, we felt it was more space saving or a better utilization of space to go with an all-in-one washer and dryer. Does it work as good? Yes, it works just as good as a washer and dryer. The problem is you can't wash them as fast because in this one, you have to wash the load, then dry it. If you run a stacked washer, you can be washing a load while you're drying a load. But again, 
If you don't like it, we'll just change it. I remember when I was younger in school, um, one of my teachers, he said he was walking down the hall and a kid says, uh, he asked the kid, he said, hey, what are you doing? And the kid says, well, I'm writing down the name of everybody that I can beat up. And Mr. Hamilton says, he looked on there, he says, well, my name's on there and you can't beat me up. And the guy says, well, I'll just take your name off the list. <laughs> Look, if you don't want the washer and dryer, we'll take it out or we'll get you one. We'll do whatever you want. That's, that's what we're here for. We're here to fulfill your dream and build you your dream motorhome. It's not mine, it's not the commenters, it's not the people that watch it. This is your deal and we're gonna do it the best of our abilities. Now as we move back here into the, bad, uh, into the bedroom, this is, we call this our IWS wardrobe cabinet and it's something that me and my wife worked on designing and, and we really like it. Again, if it isn't, if you want something different, let us design you something different. But we designed this so we could have a big TV because as I get older, I can't see as good. So I didn't wanna to have to put my glasses on to run the remote. But we like having this big area so you can, you know, when you get home at night, you can put your watch on the table and your, your billfold or whatever. I got my sock drawer, I got my underwear drawer, I got cedar line closet here so I can hang all of my clothes in here. We've got lots of storage underneath here for extra uh, pants and stuff. And we've got also got slide out drawers underneath all the way across here. Again, my wife's got her side of the closet. On this coach, we went cedar line. We thought it was just kind of a nice little accent. You can see we've got extra power outlets here. So if you charge your cell phone, you can plug it in. In this particular bedroom alone, we've got an outlet there an outlet there at each night stand so that you can have his and hers uh, charging stations at, and have your phone right there by your bed. We, some of the things that we've done is you can order these with side windows or without, but we chose to order this without side windows because it gives you a lot bigger nightstand. Again, it's all about choices. If you want a nightstand or uh, windows, we'll put windows in. It's got nice overhead reading lights here. It's really hard to see, but this is all uh, digital light controls here, so you can control everything. You can also um, raise and lower the rear window shade here via uh, just a push button. So everything's just really well thought out. That's one of the things that I really like about, or liked about Renegade and why we chose them. They build these things for racing teams and people that get out and actually use them. It's not a most people don't buy a Renegade just to park it in their garage and let it sit there. They buy these things to get out and use them. And it's so hard to understand why one coach might be $100,000 more than another until you've really come out and experienced one of these. And then I think the light bulb switches and, and you really understand it. Well, with all that being said, I think we're gonna wrap this coach up right here in the, in the rear bedroom and try to shorten the, the amount of time that you have to watch me talk on and on. One of the things I want to say is, if you like what we're doing, you know, please subscribe and leave comments. All of them things mean a lot to us. There's, we don't really know how to get better unless we, we hear feedback from you. I really want to thank you for spending some time with us today. I know time is something that you'll never get back. And the fact that you chose to spend it with us is very, is very important to us. And I really hope to see you out on the road.